So the last 10 years have been amazing and incredible to be part of. So what you're hearing right now is a baby that just was born at Sarasota Memorial. We play this for the parents and in honor of the new baby, and it's just an amazing experience for, for a new mom or new dad welcoming in their, their new child. And it goes on and on and on. And if you have triplets, it plays three times. <laughs> But it's after five o'clock. I thought the hospital closed. Oh, just yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, babies keep getting born all all hours of the night. It's crazy, right? <laughs> the history of healthcare in Sarasota is long. I mean, we're almost coming up on our 100th year anniversary now. The history of the hospital really is amazing, as it started in canvas tents and grew and grew and grew. And if you look at the history of medicine, the hospital matched that step for step. So as the population grew, the number of beds and actually became a building. So it was 30 beds, then 100 beds, then 200 beds. And you know now we're to the 1970s, 1980s. And believe it or not, that was the origin of the CAT scan in the 1970s, the intensive care unit. So now there had to be specialized units in order to serve very, very sick patients radiology to be able to distinguish differences in what people came to be treated for. Um, the MRI came about in the 1980s, believe it or not. We think it's been around forever, but it, it really hasn't been. And in the 1990s, this was one of the first institutions to start the electronic medical record, which being from Detroit and a large academic medical center, University of Michigan and UCLA, I was really amazed that this was one of the first institutions to start the electronic medical record and to start open heart surgery in the 1980s and in the 90s, robotic open heart surgery. So really has been a pace setter in addition to the growing as the community needed it to grow through the years. So part of a great healthcare system is that we continue to grow and we continue to thrive along with our community. One of those things is 10 years ago or eight, eight years ago, we started a trauma center. So people didn't have to go out of town when they got hurt and, and it saves lives each and every day. A health system is great when it's robust, experienced and vibrant. We've been able to recruit the best physicians here for many years. And when I came, I wasn't sure why that would be so in a community health system, not you know, Memorial Sloan Kettering. But it turns out that way back in the 50s, when physicians started recruiting their colleagues and their trainees, they required board certification and they required excellence. Now that was unheard of at that time, especially for a community hospital. But as it turned out, the medical staff grew um, and became even more experienced from more parts of the country because peers recruited peers, um, trainees recruited others. I mean, it was really um, something that continued to build on itself. A few years ago, we started graduate medical education to train physicians to stay in this area. We have internal medicine, ER physicians now staying here. And we did that as an investment to the community, so we are continue to grow along with this community. Just recently, there was an editorial of gratitude about the hospital, the health system, I call it, because it's so big and sophisticated now, um, what it means to serve the community. So here's what it means to serve the community and be part of the fabric of the community. When COVID came, the hospital health system responded. People didn't stay at home. They came to work day after day after day when there was a threat to their lives in addition to the patients they were treating. Um, Hurricane Ian, I don't know if you're aware of this, but this was the only health system really for many, many miles all the way past Fort Myers, probably to Naples because most of those health systems and hospitals were closed and had to evacuate patients. So our Venice Hospital, SMH, which just opened a year ago actually, um, has beds to treat 110 people on any given day. The day after the Hurricane Ian, we had 300 patients to treat. We are making huge strides in behavior health right now. Behavior health is something that's very underfunded, very under um, serviced in, in, com in communities all over this area and all over the country. 
Sarasota Memorial is stepping up and making these investments now and bringing world-class behavioral health care to this community. Oftentimes, um, when someone's moving to a community, they have check boxes. Is, it a, is there a good school system? Um, is there appropriate growth? Um, is it safe and secure? Will I, will I be able to find work? Will my children be happy? Often one of those check boxes is, is there a good health system? And we have had a great system here that's grown and grown throughout the years, but I'll tell you the most exciting part has been within the last 10 years when we have rolled out programs that are just second to none in this nation. The Oncology Center was another great thing that moved along with this community. It allows patients to stay here in their community with their families and their, and their network so they don't have to leave. They don't have to go to New York or, or Houston or even Tampa for care. Care is here, right here. When I hear the bell ring in the Oncology Center, I think of one thing, and that's the hope that it gave some family, hope that it gave some patient that there is a tomorrow. I've seen patient after patient go through that and come out on the other side with gratitude and gratefulness. Being part of a vibrant community is also living and growing with it and not pretending that you have the only level of expertise that's important because you know what healthcare is. I spend a lot of my time with the members of the community working with them to show them what we do with our buildings and our facilities and working with them to make sure they fit into their community. And I think we have a great relationship and, and a good working partnership. Most of the community know that I'm a nurse, a master's prepared nurse. So oftentimes when I would wanna feel what the organization was going through on any given day, I would make rounds with a lab coat. And so my favorite places to go often were places of vibrancy, like the emergency room, the neonatal um, intensive care unit for babies, the labor and delivery unit, the cardiac care unit, the operating room. And what I would find is people coming up and talking about their stories and their level of gratitude that we were here to support them, even if they had a devastating illness like cancer. Um, we were here to save their lives if they were in a car accident. We were here to take care of their babies as the only level two neonatal intensive care unit. These babies were um, on respirators inside incubators. We called them giraffes because they were so sophisticated and high technology, but these babies would be the size of your palm. And you have to stay with these babies for two or three months, giving them the level of support that they need to reach the level of maturity that a full grown newborn would have. So these are the stories I would hear each and every time I made rounds about people whose lives we saved, who we were supporting, who made a difference in their lives. And oftentimes it was our employees too, whose family members would come here for care and we would do something significant to support them. And, and they would say, this is why we work here because it's so important to be part of the community and to have a place for our families to be cared for as well. Community to me means when people come together for the common good and not just for the individual. Community is a living organism that grows by day. It grows with the influences that are exerted against it. It grows with the sophistication of the environment that we live in. It grows with the challenges that have to be faced each and every day. But every day it's vital because it's, it's thriving, it cares, um, it's concerned, it supports the, the people that live there. So it takes every single person to make a thriving community. It's never about one person. Um, it's about a group, a number of people who work in different areas that they're passionate about, but everybody does something. A thriving community is made up of all the people in the community. And when their voices are heard and their passions are on display, that's what makes up a great community. I think what makes a community thrive are people who care about it people who um, stand up and want to be involved and want to make it better. We have an incredible future here at Sarasota Memorial, growing with our community in terms of research, in terms of innovation, in terms of growth. 
we are continuing to bring more and more services here, do more and more research here that will benefit the members of this community by, beyond things that I can think of. What I would want to say to someone at the 100th anniversary of this health system, which is a few years away, is it grew when it was supposed to grow. It became essential to the community. It lived and breathed with the community. It became a fabric of the community. It added services when it was necessary. It recruited professionals that were necessary at the time with the level of expertise. And it's something that we can all be proud of.